I am a long time viewer of Steven's toy reviews. I've been watching him for I think close to 10 years now, around the time the first Pacific Rim came out, or at least NECA's version of the Pacific Rim figures, because this, to this day, is my favorite Steven's toy review. If you know, you know. And so I was really curious to see when he uploaded a video called Let's Talk About Super 7's Godzilla Line, I was really curious to see what he was going to say. Was he gonna bash it? Was he gonna love it? Wasn't really sure. But I gotta say, it's a pretty good video. In terms of content, there's only really one criticism that I have. That was around the point that Super 7, their approach to the Ultimates line was to, uh, to make it easier on the wall by only doing two releases per wave. Um, and Steven alluded to the fact that they were kind of abandoning that idea by releasing Wave 1 at the same time as the Dark Horse Godzilla, which I don't think is really fair because Wave 1 was revealed March 2022, I believe, and enough people need to commit to that pre-order for it to go into production. So most of the people who knew that they were going to get Wave 1 would have committed back in March of 2022. And so to say that three of them are landing at the, I mean, they are landing at the same time, to be fair. Um, but that's, I feel like we're just splitting hairs at that point. Otherwise, I, I thought that the content was really good. One issue with the video that I kind of had was more so with the format and the delivery of, of what Steven was saying. Um, it felt like he was speaking so carefully as to not taint potential relationships with Super 7 that it, the, the message and the content was starting to get a little bit confusing. Like at one point he was talking about, oh, there's going to be a $300 camera figure coming out. And I was like, wait, the, the, the Rebirth camera is going to be $300? But I, I didn't realize he was talking about Iris, uh, the Iris figure that was $300. I kind of repressed Iris once I figured out that it was going to be $300. But it was just little things like that. It, it, there was very, he was trying to be sensitive about it. And I can totally, I can totally understand that approach and where he's coming from. I think it's important to not bite the hand that feeds in these types of relationships, but I also think that the business and customer relationship is more of a handshake than a hand that feeds. Businesses need customers, but customers don't necessarily need businesses. If you have something that you're not happy with when it comes to these products, you should be able to voice them in a way that is constructive, which, again, if this was 2013, Steven, oh my god, that would have been really funny, but definitely not as productive. But you took a lot of great care to make sure that your comments were, were, were worded maybe too carefully. Um, but any business that looks at the way that these comments were received and, and thinks like, oh, we're not going to talk to this guy anymore. I, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't, it would make me not want to trust that business, to be honest. I also don't think that you have to worry about that because I've seen Brian take some pretty heavy hits from other YouTubers. If you've watched the Shardimus Prime two-part interview regarding Silverhawks, that was a really interesting video. Um, and there were lots of folks in the comments of that video saying that Shardimus was being too kind of heavy handed in some of his, his comments, let's say. And despite that, Brian invited Shardimus back to, to talk about Silverhawks once they got the first in hand, in hand versions. And so all of that is to say, I think that the, the way that, that Steven worded his comments in that video. He didn't need to tread so lightly, but I understand why he why he did. There are a couple of points that Steven makes in the video that I think are worth building upon, and that's why I wanted to make this video, is because I think that there's room for a more nuanced discussion around the points that he introduced, and I'm sure that he'll make future videos to talk about some of this stuff, but I wanted to strike while the iron is relatively hot, because at this point, the video is a few weeks old now, but I only just got my video equipment up and running. So the first point that I wanted to talk about was the Arctic cold reception that Ultimates Wave 1 received. That was the wording that Steven used in his video, Arctic cold reception, which I think is is pretty, pretty spot on. Uh, wave 1 wasn't really accepted that well, or at the very least, it was very polarizing. There were lots of people just dogging these things, and then there were some folks that really liked these things. I saw some YouTube videos where people were like, oh, these things are perfect, which I don't think... I don't think either extreme is really correct in this situation. There are definitely issues with the first wave. Like, let's just get get that out of the way. 
there are issues. There are problems. This this Biolante figure, as much as I really wanted a Biolante figure, like, there are things about it that I, I don't really like. I don't like the finish on it. It's far too shiny. Uh, it's really light. It's really light. Like, I think that part of the draw of Godzilla was the heft to him, and, and Biolante just doesn't have that. Um, now, quality control. The vines online are completely fine, but the fact that there's... There's not much to Biolante's articulation, so when the, the quality control is good, she's great. When it's bad, she's awful. But I think my biggest issue with Biolante is not even an issue. It's, why does she have a torso ball joint? Why does she, you can't really see it. <laughs> I can't really see it here, uh, just because I'm trying to be so delicate like a flower why does she have a ball jointed torso but Godzilla doesn't like that just seems like a really grave oversight when it comes to the design of these things now Godzilla himself um, so uh, I have the dark horse version in the back I really love that thing but when it comes to wave one Godzilla again there are issues right like it, there is a, a pretty shiny finish to the to the plastic to the figure there is a black wash applied, but it's it's lost in the color and again, like that final texture of the figure. The fact that you have to swap heads and there's no movable jaw, like that's that's kind of frustrating. I've seen some folks say like he looks like he's wearing a turtleneck. And yeah, I guess I could see that, but it doesn't really bother me so much. This is a swivel, not a ball joint. Why did Biolante get it, but but Godzilla didn't? You know, um, and then the tail. Obviously, everyone's talking about the tail. The articulation on the tail. It it doesn't really do what it needs to do. When when Kyle Wadiga was was talking about initially saying that like, oh, you're gonna be able to write your name in cursive. I was like, oh god, like it'll be like the NECA figure, right? Like the NECA 1989, because that was a, a really good tail. And it just unfortunately is not. Um, it's gonna make displaying this guy a pain in the ass because he's like 14 inches, 14 inches long. You know, good for him. But there are issues, and there are definitely issues with wave with wave one. Despite that, I really like where this line is going. There is room in the market for toyetic versions of these figures, and I would really like to see them take in the criticisms that people are giving and to make better figures. Like. We know that Wave 2 is supposed to be better, it's supposed to be have more matted paint. Not matted paint, more matted paint. So it's still, we're still expecting a little bit of that shine. Kyle said that we should expect a little bit more matted uh, and the teeth should be painted a little bit more. So the fact that they're able to make those changes as soon as they are is really promising to me from, from a, like a company perspective. I really like that. But I also think that there's, I feel that a lot of the disappointment from Wave 1 has to do with mismanaged expectations. Super 7 announced that they were getting the Godzilla license back in January of 2021. They revealed Ultimates Wave 1 in March of 2022. That's 14 months for consumers to go and learn about what Super 7 makes. The fact that so many people were shocked by how toyetic these things actually turned out is kind of wild to me. Because as soon as they announced that they had the license, like I dug in trying to figure out what it was I was getting into. In fact, from Entertainment Earth, I went and picked up a couple of the, there was this, there was the Mutagen Man, and there was uh, Toxie, the, the Entertainment Earth exclusives. And I went and I got them to figure out like how things articulated, what did the plastic feel like, things like that. Because at that point, these things I think were like 18 bucks each. I mean, the shipping to Canada completely screwed me. We had between the first three waves and the Shogun figures, that was like 700 US dollars worth of pre-orders. And I figured if I can get $40 worth of figures to figure out, no pun intended, what I was getting into, it was a worthwhile trade to me, right? I didn't want to invest 600, $700 into pre-orders without knowing what I was kind of getting into. Um, and the fact that you need to kind of pre-order these things or enough pre-orders need to get made for these things to even get made in the first place. It, it kind of makes you need to, to know what you're getting into to commit to that purchase. All of that is to say, I knew what I was getting into. I knew that they were going to be toyetic versions of these characters. And I'm I'm down for that. I'm really, I'm, I think that there's a target 
audience for these things that isn't being met by things like SHMA or even Haya Toys, for example. Then there are some folks out here that are trying to hold these things to the, the standards of monster arts for some reason. Like, they are very clearly completely different product category. Monster Arts prides itself on being super accurate to the movies while being articulated, looking gorgeous. Whereas Super 7 wants to make fun toys. Like Brian did an interview, I think it was at PowerCon, it might have been San Diego Comic Con. But it was this year, 2023, where he talked about how the, the Megazord Super Cyborg they did got pushed back because it wasn't completely accurate to what was in the show. And he said, yeah, like, it wasn't completely accurate, but I thought that it made for a better toy. And I think that that really hammers home the point of what these figures are trying to be. They're trying to be great toys. They're trying to be fun. They're trying to invoke a feeling of, like, what you would have had as a kid. You know, having these giant bulky things, like, rummaging through, you know, your toy box or, or, or you know, whatever. One of the comments that I'm repeatedly seeing are folks being like, Oh, these are Playmates toys offered at, at SH Monster Arts prices. SH Monster Art prices have not been at the $85 mark, like anywhere near the $85 mark for a long time, save like one or two exceptions. So like just looking at the Articulation Series website, you have the Godzilla 1991, which came out two years ago, was $95 US dollars. The Shinjuku version just released it was a hundred us dollars like okay it's 15 dollars more than the super 7 so that's like within comparison it's it's comparable right we can talk about that but when you get into some of the other figures it, there's just such a huge price discrepancy that i don't understand how people are getting how, i don't understand how people are coming up with this stuff so let's just take as an example the Super Mecha Godzilla, right? Super 7 has their Super Mecha Godzilla for 85 US dollars. The last time Monster Arts issued Super Mecha Godzilla was 2017 at 115 US dollars, right? So right off the bat, there's a $30 discrepancy, but that doesn't account for inflation, right? And you have to account for inflation because $115 then is worth more than $115 in 2023. So if I type in this into the inflation calculator, 115 US dollars in 2017, it's $144 in 2023, which means you have a price discrepancy of about $60 in value. $60 is an entire, it's, it's a whole Super 7 Ultimate figure, not the $85 one, but it's a whole Super 7 figure of a difference. And that's just Super Mecha Godzilla. Like let's look at the special color version of Destoroya. I'm just gonna say Destroyer. I don't wanna have to. <laughs> Destroyer special color version released for $160 in 2017. $160 in 2017 equates to 200 US dollars in today's money. Whereas the Super 7 version is 110 US dollars. It's, it's almost half the price of the SH Monster Arts in 2023's money. So, like I said, I don't know where folks come up with this stuff. Like, they, they, they meet different purposes. In terms of monetary value, other than the, the Shinjuku 1991, they exist in not wildly for different price brackets, but significant enough, right? Like $50 apart. Just think about this, like Gigan 2004, Great Decisive Battle, right? Like that's a 2021 release and it cost 150 US dollars at the time. That, it's gonna cost $170 in today's money, $170. If Super 7 pumped one of these out for $85, it would be half. Do you understand? Do you understand the, the, why this point confuses me so much? Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna criticize the Super 7 Ultimates, criticize them for what they are. And there are plenty of valid criticisms to be made, but don't go pulling out SH Monster Arts being like, oh, SHMA does it so much better at the same price. Like, it, that's just silly, man. Another point in the video that, that Steven makes is that these are the first releases in, in Super 7's Ultimates. I think that a little bit of grace is in order, given the fact that these are the first releases in a line. Like, thinking back to NECA's first release that was super glossy, but it was really affordable and it was really articulated, except for the tail, the bendy wire tail kind of sucked. But it was like 20 bucks, right? It was it was serviceable. And then we got the 1985 figure that needed the head corrected. 
people weren't overly happy with. And then there was the Burning Godzilla, which is a repaint of the first figure that people weren't really happy with. Like, they thought, it didn't really hit... The NECA line didn't really hit its stride until 1954. And even then afterwards, there were, it was kind of spotty. But these things take time. I have the first Monster Arch Godzilla with the, the breath effect and all that stuff. And while that figure looks amazing, it doesn't articulate well at all. It, do, it barely moves. I can't do anything with it, right? Like the tail, the tail might be worse than my Super 7 Godzilla. Like it's, it's bad. But then eventually they had the Rebirth version, right? Which solved most of the articulation issues. So I think that a little bit of grace is in order. And again, the fact that they're able to take in that feedback, make changes as early as Wave 2, I think is a really, really good sign from a company that is very clearly passionate about the license. The third point that Steven brings up that I think is worth talking about is the idea that Trendmaster Space Godzilla is easy money and to not do it is to leave money on the table. Steven, in, in legal speak, makes a point to say like, oh, you know, I can't I can't guarantee it for, for legal purposes. But let, let's be honest, man. Like Mondo just put out their trendy repaint and yes, like it sold out basically immediately. But, but, the, the, but the point I wanted to make is that I actually think that Trendmaster Space Godzilla is in the works just due to the fact of how much comes with Space Godzilla in the base release. He has all those crystals in there, right? And, and it's three different crystals. You get two copies of three different crystals. Still, those crystals are, are, are significant in size. And so the steel molds that you need to cut to make those, those crystals are, are not insignificant. Like they're, they're, I think the largest one is like as tall as a regular like a lion or some other Super 7 Ultimates figure. And like, I couldn't wrap my head around, Space Godzilla is already bigger. Like he's bigger than Base Godzilla, right? Like he's already bigger than this guy. He's got the shoulders coming out. He's got a crown that sits higher and the tail's even a little bit longer than this. You're already getting a lot of plastic for the $85 mark in comparison to Godzilla. And, but then he comes with even more, right? Like he comes with the crystals, which you need the, the steel molds to cut. And I couldn't figure out, like, how are they able to pack so much into this price? And I think the, the answer is that they are going to do the Trendmasters version. And the steel molds will already exist for that one. And so you don't need to sell as many of them to get your money back. It's really similar to, I forget which interview it was. I want to say it was Foosh. I've watched so many of these things, like too many trying to find like any any information about Toho. He talks about the Ultimates Czar face figure and how they're not gonna make their money back on that first release and they're going to have to repaint it to, I think it's the Noir face, whatever the, the evil version is. They're gonna have to sell a repaint to justify the tooling costs of the Czar face figure. And I have a suspicion that that's what they're planning for with the Space Godzilla as well, is that they're not gonna make all of their money back or if they are, they're going to make really slim margins on that first base release. But Trendmasters, we all know that the Trendmasters version would be great. They know it. We know it. I'm sure that it's on the way. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. I thought it was a really great video. I think that it was a very... And I think that Steven has done a really good job critiquing these things objectively. I saw someone in his comments saying like, oh, like you would rip these things apart if they weren't review samples given to you directly by Super 7. Maybe Steven has just grown up. Maybe we've all grown up. <laughs> like, maybe like chewing out the people that care about this license and want to give us great figures isn't the way to go about it, bud. So that's gonna be everything from me. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you again soon.